Hey guys, my name's Stephanie Rigg. I'm a relationship coach and host of the On Attachment podcast. And in this video, I'm talking about what do you do when someone says they love you, but they're just not ready for a relationship or some variation of that. It might be, you know, I'm just not a relationship person or I'm too messed up to be in a relationship, but I love you. Now, if you've ever been on the receiving end of that kind of sentiment, I know how very, very hard it is and can be. And it's just so frustrating, particularly if you are someone who tends toward anxious attachment, which I think most people I would say who find themselves in this situation probably will in large part because someone who's more secure or someone who's more avoidant is unlikely to be pursuing someone who has that kind of profile of being afraid of love. It really is the anxiously attached person who generally finds themselves uh, pursuing someone who has these intimacy fears. Uh, we know that the anxious avoidant combination is a really, really common one. Um, and while I'm certainly not someone who thinks that there's no hope for anxious avoidant couples, quite the contrary, um, I do think that when you're in a dynamic where someone is telling you that they are not ready for a relationship for whatever reason, um, then you kind of have to believe them. You have to take that at face value and you have to really respect and honor yourself and your needs um, by not trying to convince them otherwise. Um, now, I think that that's, of course, easier said than done because if you love someone and they're saying they love you back, particularly, again, if you're more anxiously attached, your kind of framework is probably that, you know, love conquers all, right? Like if we love each other, then that's all that matters. Um, when really love is, I would say, necessary but not sufficient to sustain a relationship. And I think that holding on to the fact of loving someone and, and them loving you or saying they love you um, as the only relevant factor in whether the connection is viable and worth pursuing can really lead you down a rabbit hole of relationships that are not meeting your needs, that are not aligned um, on the basis of love, right, and attachment. So I think you have to ask yourself this question of, do I want to be in relationship with someone who is telling me that they don't want to be in a relationship with me? Now you might say, yeah, but they said they love me. Again, saying you love someone is not the same as saying you want to be in a relationship with them. And so I, I put to you again, like, do you want to be in relationship with someone who says that they do not want or are not able to be in a relationship with you? I would say that that's a pretty low bar that we would want to be well and truly exceeding before pursuing a relationship with someone, a basic level of, you know, reciprocity and buy-in on both sides that you both want the same thing um, at a very basic level, which is to be in the relationship if you're having to convince someone straight out of the gate, um, just on the fact of being in a relationship, then that's probably going to set you up for a very skewed dynamic where you're always going to feel like they could just up and leave at any moment um, because they didn't want to be there in the first place, right? You're always going to be scared that that's their trump card that they'll play. Well, is, this is too hard. This isn't worth it. I can't do this. I'm just, you know, not ready. That's always going to loom large in the back of your mind. Um, and what that's going to do is mean that you're going to really shrink in the relationship. If that does work, you know, if you do convince them to be in the relationship, then there's always going to be this niggling thing of, well, do they even want to be here? Uh, and so you're always going to feel like they've got the power because you wanted it more than them. Um, you love them more, you care more, you're more invested. Um, and that's going to create a really wobbly foundation for a relationship that's going to make it incredibly hard for you to trust and feel secure. And um, particularly when for anxiously attached people, you've already got that fear of abandonment that sits so deep um, and really shapes your experience of relationships at the best of times. So when you know the the premise of the relationship is that the other person said that they didn't really want it and you persuaded them otherwise, I don't think that that's a very um, prudent basis upon which to pursue a connection as someone with anxious attachment patterns. So as hard as it is, and it is hard, it's really, really hard, but I think you've got to 
raise the bar for yourself and trust that you will love other people and other people will love you back and there will be a person who is ready for a relationship and that is the person that you want to be investing your time and energy in, not the person who says they're not ready. Um, again, even if it's just their fears and, you know, so much of the time there is this thing of, oh, they're just scared. Maybe they are just scared. Maybe not. And I think that you know, there's a separate conversation to be had around anxiously attached people um, kind of take it upon themselves to psychoanalyze their partners or their would be partners um, and thinking that, you know, you can kind of be their therapist or be their coach and, and resolve it all for them. Um, and I think, you know, there can be a bit of an arrogance to that. And I say that as someone who is totally guilty of it. Um, but even putting that to one side, I think you've really just got to let that be, you know, if someone's telling you they don't have capacity, trust that they don't have capacity and, you know, move on with your life, move on to free up the space for something that is more aligned. And, you know, again, I know I've said it multiple times, but you really want to consider like, what are my basic requirements for, you know, a partner. And I would suggest that someone wanting to be there is just a non-negotiable. Um, you know, it seems so obvious to say that, but if you are someone with more anxious attachment patterns, you probably know, I certainly know from having worked with thousands of people with anxious attachment, um, that that is often not the case, that you will um, kind of tirelessly pursue connections with people who are, you know, showing you mixed signals, who are kind of lukewarm in their you know, attention, their interest, um, their level of commitment to the relationship. So really consider that, um, consider what you're looking for, what you need in order to be happy in a relationship, to feel secure in a relationship. Um, and it is more than love. So someone saying they love you, but they're not ready. Focus on the thing that you don't want to hear rather than the thing you do want to hear. Focus on I'm not ready or I'm not available or, you know, I'm not looking for a relationship. Um, as much as that's the thing that's hard to hear, that's the most important thing to hear and to take away rather than, you know, I love you or I think you're really great or any number of other things that it's so easy for our brains to kind of latch onto and run with and sort of ignore all the stuff that we would rather not have to pay attention to, not have to reckon with. So hope that that's been helpful. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my podcast on attachment, um, like, subscribe, all of those things. Um, thanks so much for your support. <music>